countrywide, our lives are clogged up with clutter. We Brits love to hoard. We stuff up countless storage units, choking our garages, locking up barns. Your face has gone all flushed. <laughs> They're a record of our dreams. You're a DJ, you say? Yeah, yeah. Started in 1970. Distant lives. Oh, some of my mum and oh. dad. And excess baggage. For many, it's a boxed up burden. I mean, do you really need all these? Among the mess and mayhem. You've always got to keep an oily rag. <laughs> my mission is to dust off the diamonds. Between 1,500 and 1,800 pounds. That's Amazing. a surprise, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Eke out the emotions. I'm quite emotional about it, actually. And clear out and cash up in the process. 280, 300. <laughs> Welcome to Storage Hoarders. Our first hoarder is A.D. Denning and his partner, Tone. They have a house full of clutter that's close to reaching critical mass. At the moment, we haven't got a sitting room to sit in. Um, our bathroom is half done, so we can't have a relaxing bath. Uh, it was just nice to have everything done so that we can relax and do normal things in the evening. A.D. and Tone live in Yeovil in Somerset, a county famed for its traditional cider and delicious cheddar cheese. But the huge house-based hoard is sending the couple simply crackers. We originally moved back to Yeovil in 2004 to look after my elderly mother. And then she sadly passed away in 2007, rapidly followed by my father. So we actually ended up in total with the contents of five houses squeezed into the one house. The boxes stop our day-to-day -day living. I mean, they're there, we're having to face them. There's a lot of rooms in the house we can't use. We've got it all. Um, ornaments, furniture, uh, small items like Mum's jewellery, um, through to huge items like Dad's rosewood bookcase. And it seems Eddie's pride and joy in the shape of his limited edition Capri is also suffering. My car should be in the garage, but the garage is converted into an office for me at the moment. Um, and that should be in the sitting room. Because of her disability, Tone is finding life particularly difficult and the hoard is only making things worse. Having so much in storage has really sort of paralysed us. Um, we've just found it really difficult to move forward. Finding a light at the end of the tunnel, that, that would be really good to actually see some light for so long now. There just hasn't been that light at the end of the tunnel for us. It's time for these two to take on the clutter once and for all. It'll be a real adventure. Uh, some of the boxes, yes, we packed ourselves a few years ago, uh, but many of the boxes that came from my father's house after he died, we've never actually been inside them. So it's going to be a little bit of an exploration. If we get any money from, for the items, if we're able to sell some and move forward, I'd like to do what we've already been doing with the money, which is actually ploughing it back into the house. We're in the mindset now that we really want to get on and get everything cleared. Well, let's hope I can help them towards their goal of getting clutter-free for good. Now, what are we going to be doing today? Well, we're going to be sorting out our sitting room, believe it sorting or not. Sorting out your sitting room? Can we get in now? I'm looking forward to this. Let's go in. Let's go in. Yeah, come this way. Oh, wow. Right, It's like a sort of mini auction room, isn't it, in here? It yeah. is. It's Interesting. a sitting room where you can't sit. Yes. yes. Welcome Ooh. to our Aladdin's cave. Yes. These suitcases, are they empty or are they...? No, they're full. No, they're full, no such like. Well, and where did the cases come from? The cases are actually all my uh, father's. John Denning, was John that Denning. his name? Yes. Oh. Oh, my lord. A memory box. Oh, his Russian but hat. what on earth are we going to do with the others? His Dad Russian was a, a Russian a language expert. He had a degree in Russian. Did he? And he acquired that on one of his trips to Russia, sure. bird watching. Sure. Wow. Try it on, Adrian. Oh, let's see what it's like. Actually, my head's too big. It's a very small um, hat, isn't it, actually? Yes. The circumference yes. is yeah. really small. There might be an adjustment somewhere. No. But it no. fit you any better? Let's have a look. Um, no. Is this your, are these your dad's clothes? House of York. House of York. Because he was so into this Richard III Society, <laughs> lots of the members, like for Christmas presents, would knit him pullovers and things. Hilarious. Oh, my goodness. Well, let me see. This is a one-off, isn't it? Um, yes. No, there's another one there's there. Another one. <laughs> there's another one. 
Uh, what? Oh my goodness. Well, actually, no, no, they are. They're all unique, Neat. aren't they? They are. They oh are. my goodness. And the gold thread going through. That's amazing. That's hilarious. Did your dad actually wear these? Oh, yes. Can you remember him wearing them? Oh, definitely. He you never saw, him yes. more, never saw him without them. They're certainly unique, but I think those jumpers can stay with Eddie for now. That thing over there it looks like a bedpan. It is Can we indeed. Have a look at that. Yes, yeah, sure. It's been, look. it's been speaking to me ever since I've come into the room. Yeah. So, um, do you remember this from your childhood? I do indeed. Actually, this was hanging up in the hall at the house where I was brought up. Ah, right. So uh, it's a decorative item. Absolutely. I'm sure it was used at one point. It was very bright copper, but it's a little oh, bit dusty. Right. It's got a bit tarnished. But yes, you'd open it mm -hmm. up, put the hot coals. Oh, oh, there's a little note in there. Hang on. Great, great Granny Reynolds used to fill this warmer with hot coals to warm the beds on the farm at Silverton in Devon around about 1860. So this has been in your family for over 150 years? Yes, all the way back to 1860. That's amazing. Now, originally I was thinking, oh, this could probably be sold. Mm. But actually, having come actually... across that bit of history, I'm not so sure that we shouldn't be polishing this up and giving it pride of place somewhere on the wall. Well, there are clearly loads of precious family heirlooms here. I only hope our search pans out in Adie's favour. Our next hoarder in need is 20-year-old Jordan Cousins and his good friend Sam. Jordan's had a really tough couple of years that have resulted in a huge hoard now hiding in his garage. But how did it get so bad? Well, I've had, I've had a... a a hoard of clutter build up after my mum and my brother passed away. Two years ago, Jordan lost his mum to cancer, followed tragically by his younger brother, Stephen. Now he's left with all their belongings and is trying to find the courage to sort through it all. Boxes got filled that ain't been opened still to this day. So, yeah, there's, 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 there's a lot of items I don't know about still. But obviously, it will bring back memories. Jordan lives in Loughborough, Leicestershire, site of the world's largest bell foundry, whose bells ring out in St Paul's Cathedral and York Minster. Jordan's friend Sam has been a great support over the years and knows only too well what Jordan has had to deal with. He's just stored it in, in the garage, left it there, and it's built up on him, and now it's got to the point where he's struggling to manage it. It's just toughly daunting to attack. It's just horrible to face. You just avoid it, you try and just carry on life normally. I think it's more the fact he can't let go of what possessions were his mum's and his brother's and what's actually of any sort of importance to him, so to speak. There is going to be a lot I don't want to part with, but I've got no choice. I'm going to try and pick out a few key items, but yeah, majority of it I need gone. Not only does Jordan want to clear the hoard for peace of mind, he has a very special incentive for making some money. Um, I've got a bit of motivation to get it sorted. It's coming up to second second year anniversary in a, in, a, in a week or so. I would I would I would like to start putting money away for my mum's and brother's ashes to be turned into a diamond. That's my mum, my mum's wish for Stephen's ashes. So I would I would love to down the line get both their ashes turned into a diamond. Um, but it's just very costly. And with little son Riley to think about, Jordan's ready to look to the future. That's all I need out of it is, is that weight off my shoulders. Once that's gone, I'll, 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 be, I'll be more than happy. I can't wait to get in it. Let's hope antiques and collectibles expert Paul Hayes can help Jordan unearth something saleable from his hefty hoard. All right, do we need a forklift? Yeah. That's it, sure. All right, so we get it open. Is it open OK? That's it. Right, all oh, right, I see what you mean. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> Oh, at least we've got one fan today. Yeah, we right. <laughs> So there you are, so there's loads of stuff. That's it, a lot of stuff to go through, yeah. A lot of stuff at the bottom I wouldn't have seen for a long while. OK, well, I can see something sort of electrical. Is this a camera set or something like that? Or a... I think it's a portable DVD player. Oh, right, OK. So w were you interested in all this sort of stuff? Yeah, obviously, we, we used to go a lot of places um, in England uh, for the weekends with my mum and we used to use it for travelling and stuff, so... Right, OK. But, yeah. So, so how long since you, since you lost your mum? Um, two years into this month, two years in a week, so... Good man, so it's time now to... Let's get on, It's, time. Yeah, it's, it's Jordan time, time now. Yeah, it's all right, so come on then, Sam. You're doing very little there, mate. Let's get it all going. <laughs> and the first of many family mementos soon emerges from the pile. So whose is the duck, then? Oh, that, that was uh, my brother's. He had it at a young age. It brings back a lot of memories. He had um, cerebral palsy mentally and 
physically. He was blind, so he couldn't he couldn't see anything. Right. So obviously, with with um, the noise that it makes and right, do you think this is something that you'd, you'd want to hang on? Yeah, to I think yeah, definitely. It's something I, I would like to keep. Um, okay. It brings back a lot of memories. So right. well, okay. maybe pass it down to my to my lad. Yeah, well, let's put this to one side then. So it's definitely. All, all right. So so he, he's definitely staying. Well, does he have a name? Fred. Fred, there we are. <laughs> Fred's staying there, all right. Things like your duck and any sentimental items is maybe have a little group together that you definitely keep. Yep. Oh, notice you've got a, like a, like a, is it a photograph album here. Oh, right? yeah, that's when we went on holiday, yes. So what's in there? Wow, that was when we went to Florida. So that's your brother? That's, that's my brother, that's yeah. That's Stephen? Yeah, 1996. Right. He would have been seven. Yeah, it's nice to reflect on some of the past times when I, rem I do remember bits here and there. Yeah, I, I, put in. Like that silhouette of you too. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. that's fantastic. So how old were you being there? I'd have been three. It, it has been, it has been a bit hard to to part ways with him because obviously, it was part of my life, big part of my life. Yeah, um, of There's a lot of memories here, like, very difficult memories for you. Yeah, I'm sure. yeah, it's yeah. A massive part of your life. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay, it's well, definitely something I'll keep. Let's have a keepsake box here. So we've got the duck and the and a photo album there and. Uh, and some bits and bobs. While there's a huge amount to get through, fingers crossed Jordan can stay positive and conquer the clutter for good. Coming up, there's a pointed reminder of Aidy's grandfather. Yes. This is a real sword. Yes. And Jordan mixes with his hoard for the very first time. Yeah, man. Come here, okay? Hello. How are you doing? One, two, one, two. Three, four, five. Killed it. Earlier, we met A.D. Denning and his partner, Tone. They've found themselves with five houses worth of clutter in one and are desperate to downsize the detritus. So this has been in your family for over 150 years? Yes. And after a tough couple of years, young Jordan Cousins has a whole load of stuff he'd like to make money on to help him towards a brighter future. It does look something you could drink out of. <laughs> Later, our antiques experts will be helping our hoarders pick out anything of value they can take to auction, reclaim some much-needed space, and hopefully make a bit of cash on top. To help our hoarders clear out their stuff, I want them to split their possessions into categories. Keep it for the really sentimental pieces, skip it for anything old, broken, or just plain awful, or sell it for the items they think could be of value. I've also added a charity pile onto which they can put anything that's too good to chuck. But so our hoarders can see exactly what they're dealing with, I've arranged for some help moving their items to a larger space. Now we can really see their hoards in all their glory. For AD and Tone, it's a real mix of items that have been passed down through their families. While Jordan's mishmash includes everything from electrical items to glassware. It's time to get tough with the stuff. Oh, my goodness me. Wow. Look at it all. Oh, dear. Oh, wow. Where are we going to start? I don't know. And it's the items with a local connection that first catch history buff Aidy's eye. That's real local interest, because that's a really old print of Sydney Gardens done as a paperweight. That would go to a local collector. Oh, no, what? This is a treasure trove. got a set, hang on, a set of old Yeovil placemats. St John's Church, well, that hasn't changed much. Princess Street, yeah, that looks pretty different. Uh, Middle Street, the main, main street uh. through the town, totally different. There's none of those buildings left. They would be rather nice to keep, because it's local, mm. but we need to be using them and putting coffee cups on them. Yes. Not just leaving them in a box that we didn't even know about. That's true. Yeah. Good for you, Aidy. That's one box down, only a few dozen to go. Antelope or gnu? Um, I'm not sure. I'd say antelope. You'd say Time antelope. for me to help with yeah. this beast oh, of a horde. No, no, Hello. Hello. It's not a tiger, that's for sure, is it? No, but he's got no. some wonderful metal horns. Oh, my goodness. They're not wood, they're sort of metal horn. Yeah. So, are these Possibly. going for sale? Not sure, there's it's a lovely pair of them. He's a deep them. breath here, Tony. He's taking a deep breath. Well, actually, when I was looking at them just now, I was thinking, yes, we'd sell them. Yes, and then... Because we haven't really got anywhere to put them, have we? I just can't see where they're going to fit Can in. Can I make an executive decision? Executive decision. Sell. Give them here. Sell? Ooh. OK. Right. You're approving well of that. I am, I am. Well done, Aidy. A decisive start. And there's another brush with history. Wow, this is very posh. 
It's leather case. Oh. My goodness. Oh, yeah. <gasps> and it's all marks. So it's B and a C and a D. Ah, so that's my grandfather again, Basil mm. Denning. Basil Denning. 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 That'll be Basil again. Yes. How grand is that? We'll have to... I think the cell pile. Show this to the expert. Look at the face. Because really, well, I know I'm really surprised You're because astonished. I'm astonished no, at that. I mean, the thing is, he's we, thinking. We want to we want to clear the decks so that we yeah. can get the house done. There you are, Hans. I don't really use clothes brushes. No. And they're all marked silver. It looks like Eddie's on a mission. There really is a huge range of stuff here, including a plethora of family heirlooms. Wow. These don't look like toys. No, no, we're back to my grandfather again, Basil Denny. What, this is a real sword? Yes, this is his um, regimental sword of honour that he was awarded. OK. Now, if I remember so rightly... Do you know what he was awarded it for? I'm not exactly sure. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, that is one impressive piece of kit. It looks oh, beautiful, Oh, can we open it, it out? Sure. Oh, Henry Wilkinson, Palmer, yes. London. It's a Wilkinson sword. <laughs> it's a Wilkinson sword. A little bit tarnished in oh, places. Oh, my goodness me. Have you got any idea how much it's worth at no. all? It's got to be pretty rare. Um, it's got a serial number on there as well. Wow. 44002. Do you know what? More than get it valued. I think we need to take this as some sort of specialist who might be able to tell you a bit more about this. That'll be good. Well, who better to tell us more about Eddie's grandfather's sword than local auctioneer and military expert, Sean Rock? It's been stored away, kept safely, um, and we've always intended to find out a bit more about it, but never got around to it. What we have here is an 1897 pattern officer's sword used by officers of the British Army. Mm. Now, on closer inspection, mm -hmm. and my experience tells me that your grandfather served in the Royal Engineers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, your grandfather would have had to have been an officer mm -hmm. in the First War. Would that mm -hmm. be correct? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Looking at the number, the issue number on the spine, 44002, mm -hmm. tells me that this sword was produced in about 1913. Mm -hmm. And from memory, that year, I think they produced about 513 swords. And as we can see with these swords, the 1897 pattern, it's got a shagreen grip, which would have been um, ray skin or shark skin. Mm -hmm. It's made by Henry Wilkinson, Pall Mall, London. And it's got the King George V monogram there, who was our monarch until 1936. So it all ties in, mm. obviously being made in 1913. It looks to me to be in quite nice condition, well looked after. While these particular swords might have been an effective weapon in 1897, they were of little use against the machine guns and artillery of the First World War. But this style of sword is still used by British Army officers today for ceremonial purposes, and there's a keen collector's market for the best examples. Did you want to know a value of it? That, or? Would, that would be interesting, especially for insurance purposes, because obviously we'd never get rid of it as a family heirloom. Dependent on the condition of the people in the room, they generally sell between two and three hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. But this is a nice clean example, a good clean blade, and you've got both the scabbards and the dust jackets. I would like to say that this would be valued for insurance purposes between 350 and 450 oh, really? pounds. Wow, yeah. it's so nice to actually find out the true story of it. Yes. And especially to find out that it's a real sword, it wasn't just for dress purposes. Brilliant. Well, thank you ever so much for your time, Sean. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Well, that was a really useful visit. We found out lots more about the sword. Yeah, we're going to keep it in the family. Yes. Let's learn some more about it. While Adie and Tone head back home, in Loughborough, Jordan's face with his hoard for the very first time. Too much. Yeah, it's not too much. A couple of hours, it'll be done. Well, I'm glad Sam's feeling optimistic. This place looks like a bomb site. Let's get cracking, then. Could this be an item to sell? It's broke now. I know, no good. Shame I didn't keep it in good nick. 
Can we okay? Yeah, man. Can we okay? Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? One, two, one, two. Three, four, five. Killed it. Yeah, maybe I killed it, but maybe not. Killed it. <laughs> I think it's time to stop playing and get back to sorting, boys. Time also for expert Paul to make some sense from the mess. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff there, mate, isn't there? Too much. Yeah. Too much. Has it been quite hard just to... Just yeah, it's just, look, just looking at it, it's daunting. Uh, who's is all this in? A DJ deck like that? Yeah, well, it's, cool. yeah, no good now. Were you sort of down with a the massive then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Am I saying that right? <laughs> was, was it, were you yeah. twisting my melon? <laughs> <laughs> wicked, was it wicked? <laughs> was that it? <laughs> I don't think Fat Boy Slim's got too much to worry about, Paul, but at least the piles are getting bigger. Now, I do notice you've got quite a big keep pile, but are they things that sort of mean a lot to you? Yeah, photos, the odd sentimental item, okay. bed drawer. Was it helping? Do you feel better to get... Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm glad it's, we're making progress. Good. You seem a bit more relaxed anyway. Yeah. So I did notice something here. Yeah, I look, I want to show you these. Whose are these? Oh, they were my mum's. Right. So obviously these the phase that she went through towards the latter part. Yeah, yeah, when she had a chemotherapy, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, she got these funded. The cost near enough was two hundred pound each. Um, really yeah, right. they'll go a long way for someone. Okay. So how do you feel about sort of uh, parting with parting with? Yeah, them? fine, mate. Yeah, I'd happily let donate these to someone that's going to make good use of them. Okay. That can't afford to buy them. So yeah, I'll happily donate them. What a generous gesture by Jordan. Sorting through all these things can't be easy for him, but he's really making the best of it. Our hoarders have nearly finished sorting. Adi and Tone seem to have a ton of stuff to sell. While Jordan's got plenty for the skip and a few possibles for his sell pile too. The next step is to find out if there's any real value in those items up for sale. Coming up, a family heirloom reflects well on Adrian Tone. That mirror on its own could fetch £200. That really does yeah. surprise me a lot. But will the auction leave them shattered? 380 with me. I'm here to help our two stockpilers in distress get strict with their stash when I ask them to keep it, skip it, or sell it. The question now is, do they have anything of value in their hoard? They would be rather nice to keep. We need to be using them and putting coffee cups on them. A.D. Denning has been storing five houses worth of family paraphernalia for the past nine years. With a lifetime of experience in the world of antiques and collectibles, Will Perry Field have some good news for A.D. about his belongings. Perry's been through your piles. And he's picked out some gems that he wants to talk to you about. I want to look at this mirror because this is really beautiful. It's Art Nouveau. Ah, and you've got the ornate, image of the lady it? here. And ah. it's hallmarked just there. Ooh. Nice Birmingham mark for 1902. To have the whole set would be wonderful, but actually you've got the best piece because you've got the mirror. Oh, now, wow. that mirror on its own could fetch £200. What? Believe it or not. £200, that's... that's good, isn't it? That really does yeah. surprise me a lot. Yeah. Um, I know you don't like this. It's just not my cup of mm. tea. Well, let's I'm... just have a quick look at it. It's, do you know why it's called a carriage clock? Absolutely no. no. no because you can carry it, and the idea was that it would come in a leather case and it would be taken in the carriages, so people would have time with them. It's about 40 years old. Really? Uh, yes, used to live in the sitting room. I'd say that was older than 40 years. So maybe yeah, she bought it. it as a used... Yes, yeah. I'd say that was probably yeah. 1900, something like that. Really? You've got the original yeah. key as well. Right. Mm -hmm. You're looking at a minimum of 60, but could go as much as £100. Really? Wow. Yeah. That yeah, surprised you. You do surprise me on that, because I'm thinking, you know, there are so many clocks in the world, and really, it's just another clock. The other end of the table, mm -hmm. um, where Aid is standing, mm -hmm. You've got some really old pots. Mm -hmm. And I think that wow. they're possibly late 18th, early 19th century. Mm. And then we've got the old copper kettle there, uh -huh. which I think is later, actually. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a late Victorian one, mm. with a very interesting letter that goes with it that you've got there. Yes. Oh, what's in the letter? Yeah. It's almost like a sort of little thank you very much, here's a copper kettle for doing whatever you did. It's 
date is? Oh, 1912. Yeah, 1912. It doesn't add value to it particularly. Just what I was going to ask But you. it adds interest. Yeah. Yes. Makes yes. it more yes. interesting. Those pots could be a surprise. I'm, I'm going to say 60 to 80 on the collection, but those pots might surprise us at auction. Really? Yes, wow. because people do look for original old pots. Inside, guys, there's a bookcase that we looked at that's actually in pieces. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's rosewood. Mm -hmm. It's lovely, actually. Now, mm -hmm. we know brown furniture is not the biggest seller, but rosewood is kind of the Rolls Royce of brown furniture is anyway. Right? So if you're going to have a cabinet, you'd really want a rosewood one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth upwards of £400. Never. No. Yes. So it's yeah. worth putting it's together nice. and sending off to auction. Wow. Right, definitely. Sorry, uh, definitely. With Sold. that estimate, Sold. I think we go with that. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. I think that's good. Yeah, good yeah, I do. Fantastic. Because it would put a big dent into the, mm. you know, the decorating the front room yeah. budget. Mm. I mean, yeah. it's just really, that's really good. Well, it turns out AD is quite a haul. The items he's taking to auction are the Edwardian silver hand mirror, which Perry estimates at a very attractive £200. At a timely 60 to 100 pounds is that carriage clock. The mixed hoard of copper items, including that impressive kettle, at 60 to 80 pounds for the lot. Perry thought that Victorian rosewood bookcase might be a bestseller at a whopping 400 pounds. A mixed collection of silver items, including candlesticks and a powder box, at 80 to 120 pounds. And at 20 to 30 pounds, it's game on for a vintage cricket kit bag. But there's one more item that's really caught Perry's eye. Lastly, really, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is this here, which I'm going to pick up yeah. because this is very interesting. And as you can see, it's, it's from Yeovil and it's mm -hmm. a seal and it's dated 1846. Mm -hmm. It may be the town hall seal. I think it needs further investigation. Mm -hmm. it's, it's old. You can see everything about it is of the date. Mm. It's in its original frame, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't want to give a value. It may, it may not be hugely valuable, mm -hmm. but I think it's hugely interesting. Yes. To find out more about the wax seal stamp, Perry takes Aidy and Tone to meet local historian Joseph Lewis at the Somerset Community Access and Heritage Centre in Yeovil. Right. Oh, my word, that's rather nice. It's a t the Special Commissioners of the Town of Yeovil 1846 wax seal. The first thing that when I saw your item, there's a symbol of a gentleman with two pillars in the middle. And you yes. might say, well, what does that mean? Well, that's depicting St John the Baptist. And we've helpfully, and we might say, why St John the Baptist? Well, we've got Yeovil's parish church, St John's Church Yeovil, mm -hmm. which was started in 1380, completed in 1405. Oh, so that's wow. where the St John the Baptist comes from. So we've also got an example of the actual seal maker, for a simple term, that would have made your seal. Wow. And there we are. And it is the same date as yours as well, 1846. So that one would have made that seal? It would have done, yes. That's amazing. Incredible. Isn't it? Yeah. That really yeah. is incredible. Yeah. So do you think that would have been lifted off of a document? Possibly. Yes, mm. or look, that's why it's being cut into these, this sort of, uh, octagonal shape. To tidy it up. Yes, yes, or it may even have been, because of this frame looks period, mm. Mm -hmm. it may even have been one that they had an example of, Ooh. possibly. Wax seals were first used in the Middle Ages when kings or bishops would attach them as pendants to official documents and decrees. As they became more widely used, people would have their own personal seal with a particular symbol or image instead of a signature. The use of wax to seal correspondence came later as a way of keeping things secret and to avoid using envelopes, which were considered a rather expensive luxury. Uh, one thing that's always puzzled us with this is how really my parents, grandparents may have come across it. I mean, is it possibly, could it have been given as an official thank you for something or could someone have lifted it out of the bin because they thought it looked nice? So it could be something like when you leave or you retire from a business, you have your presentation clock or your presentation right. watch. Right. Because it's in its own case and we know how many commissioners there were mm -hmm. because they were leading businessmen, mm -hmm. then it could be likely that that's how it was given to them and came into your family. Would it be possible to actually donate the seal to the archives here? Oh, goodness me, I'm overwhelmed by... Yes, we'd be very grateful. Thank you. 
Yeah, well, we were thinking, I mean, you've got the ability here to store it carefully. Yeah. Um, if we put it back on the wall in our house when we finish decorating, it's going to be exposed to sunlight and things. Um, and historically, it does seem quite important from what you've told us this yes. morning, Joseph. So, no, we'd be more than happy to, to donate it. Well, thank you. That's very generous of you. Oh, you're welcome. Didn't you have a couple of parking tickets you wanted? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. No, you're more than welcome. Glad we could do it. Real benefit to the collection thank and you. certainly a benefit to other people within the Yeoman community. Which would be nice, other people can yes. see it. Yes. Yeah. We've learnt an awful lot this morning, um, not only about the seal in particular, but also about Yeovil in that period in the mid-1800s. Well, Eddie's so generous, he really deserves to do well at auction. I'm looking forward to seeing how he gets on. So, quite a big day for you two today. We've been really looking forward to it. Oh, that's good. You've got lots of items in the auction, haven't you? Yes, we were quite surprised because some of the lots have been split up into individual items. Mm. So, yeah, it means we're going to get lots of excitement, lots of bites of the cherry, hopefully. I'm with you on that, AD. But what does auctioneer Robert Dodd make of his items? I like the silver. I think they'll do quite well. Um, I'm quite, quietly confident. The other thing I like is the bookcase. It is quality. It will be interesting to see how good we are at selling a flat back bookcase. Well, the first hammer is about to fall on that vintage cricket kit bag. Let's hope the bidders are bowled over by its estimate of 20 to 30 pounds. Bids with me at 15 pound only on this, looking for 18. Are we all done? Last time, 18, 19, 20 pound, I'm out. 20 pound, looking for 22. All excellent, excellent. At 20 pound, 286. 20 pounds is a good start for the kit bag. Time to up the game a little though, and at 200 pounds, will someone take a shine to the Edwardian silver hand mirror and matching brush set? Aidy's put on a reserve of 175 pounds. Oh wow. Be straight in at 100 pound. Looking for 110 on this. 100 I've got, are we all done? Last time at 100. Mate, not sold. sold. The mirror and brush set are left unsold. And even a reasonable £50 reserve couldn't entice the bidders to the elegant carriage clock. But with an estimate of £60 to £80, pounds, the collection of copper items, including the kettle, did manage to get the sale room simmering. All done. And sold for £48. Pounds. And another collection of 13 silver vanity items, estimated at 80 to 120 pounds, sold for a sparkling 169 pounds. Time for the last lot, that impressive Victorian rosewood bookcase that Perry estimated at 400 pounds. And the bids with me at 300 pound on that. Looking for 310. I've got 310, 320 with me, 330, 340 with me. 350, 360 this with is me. Gonna go. 370, 380 with me. Looking for 390. Are we all done? Last time at 380 pounds on the bookcase. Happy. Thank you. What a great end to the day and a whopping 380 pounds into the kitty for AD and Tone. So how was that for you two? Oh, it was fantastic. It, it was, was wonderful. It was such fun. Auctioneer is amazing. I've never mm. seen anything like it. But you made. £617. I was trying wow. to work it out on the fly. I was way out. How much do you think? I was thinking about 450 I thought around about sort of, yeah, the early 400s. Oh, wow. 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 That's really good. Excellent. That's fantastic. Brilliant. That's going to go a long way. Yeah. Wow. That's going to go Great a long start. way. You're going to have gilt edging on your skirting boards now in, the, in, uh, the, in that living room. Yeah, yeah. gilt on the lamps as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. That'll be good. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay. So, after commission and a few unsold items, AD and Tone have still made £462 at auction. That's a really good result. So, is it nice having a clutter-free room? Oh, it's fantastic because the skip stuff went to the skip, the charity stuff's gone to the charity. We can see the carpet. Mm -hmm. Very soon it's going to, you know, just be ready for decorating, and that's really good. Yeah. We have some holiday coming up soon, so we're really going to hit into that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, get the rest clear. Adie and Tone had a huge hoard to deal with, but they've managed to tackle it head on and come away with some cash as well. Here's to a happy time ahead for this very deserving pair. Still to come, there's a bit of light relief for Jordan. Wow. 
I'm speechless. But will he manage to convince a horde of car boot buyers? And I want a bargain on them. 25p each. Oh, come on, less than that. Earlier, A.D. Denning and his partner Tone made over £460 from taking some of their inherited clutter to auction. And now it's the turn of Jordan Cousins and his mate Sam. Jordan's had a tough few years after losing his mum and his brother and now wants to sell off some of the things he's inherited. Antiques and collectibles expert Paul Hayes has been helping Jordan identify the items that could make him some money. Now, now one of them has to be this fantastic motorcycle jacket. Now, was that yours? No, no. It, a friend gave it me a good few years ago, and it's just been sat in my wardrobe for years. Right. Um, and then, eventually, it just got put in the garage, so... Right. Well, these are really, really expensive things, and what I like about this one, it's mint condition. Yeah, it's good condition. Uh, and it hasn't got any names of any oil companies That's or it, yeah. sponsorships. And people, it's plain, you know, yeah, it's not yeah. too garish for people. Yeah. So I think on a car boot sale, if you find a biker, that's 30, 40 quid all day long, isn't it? Nice one. All right, so you yeah. want someone who's into motorcycles. And they've got quite a lot of a, a technical things. You've got a, a video camera. We'll make sure there's nothing in there before it goes. But how do you feel about getting rid of... Yeah, yeah, definitely, of, uh, yeah. And I still think that's sort of 30, 40 pounds. Somebody who has that particular camera might have the recharger and, and the leads and so on, so I still think you'd be able to sell that. And then one of the very, very first things that we come across as we open the garage was this little portable DVD player. Yep. And you're quite happy to, to get rid of that? Yeah, definitely, yeah. All yeah. right. Well, that is in really good condition. It's got its bag with it. Again, another sort of 20, 30 pounds. So between that lot there, you could have sort of 60 to 80 quid's worth. It's amazing, isn't it? Like yeah, that's up. it, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, some Royal Dalton bits and pieces. Where, where did all these bits come from? Oh, well, I think I remember, well, my auntie buying these for my mum um, a, a good six odd years ago. Okay. I'm not sure how much she paid for them. Right. Um, and then same with this, my mum got it as a present and it's just been sat there. Right. Well, so. I think the champagne glasses would have been quite expensive. I mean, they're there for a special occasion, maybe. Yeah. Today's a special occasion. Yeah, definitely. Them, yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's a good box to set. Uh, you've got a set of six glasses. Um, they're in great condition. Um, I mean, they probably cost 10 or 20 pound a glass. Yeah. You know, so if we said five or 10 pound a glass, it's still 30, 40 quid. Yeah, yeah. That little lot there. And that's a great buy for somebody. Somebody will buy them as a present. Yeah, somewhere. definitely. Right. Mm -hmm. And a little tea set here, maybe, you know, 10 or 20 quid yeah. as a set. Well, although they're not quite antiques, it seems Jordan has a few items that Paul thinks should work well at a car boot sale. So the items he'll be selling include the leather biker jacket at 30 to 40 pounds. At another 30 to 40 pounds, let's hope the buyers focus on that video camera. At 20 to 30 pounds, we'll certainly be watching the portable DVD player closely. There's a tea set at a tasty 10 to 20 pounds. And there are memories of Mum too in the shape of that presentation set of glasses at 30 to 40 pounds. But I've also been thinking about how we can best use some of Jordan's family photos. So I've sent him to meet interior designer Alison Cork, who's an expert in a very special type of recycling. I had a good old think about what we could do to use them in a way that you can enjoy them every day, because obviously they do hold a lot of meaning for you. And this is the idea, which I hope you'll approve of. OK. It's a lamp which has a sort of frosted glass to it. And what we're going to do is we're going to use it as a sort of permanent light box. So we're going to attach the negatives all the way around the lamp. And then when it's illuminated, you'll be able to wow. see those images all the time. Oh, that's amazing. And your little boy will as well. Wow. Yeah, that, that, that's fantastic. What do you think? Do you yeah, think it's going to work? I'm amazed, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I think it's really going to show them to their best advantage. So what we need to do is pick the negatives that you really want to use. Okay. Um, so let's do a bit of sorting, and then I'll show you how to stick them on, and you're going to help me do this, all right? OK, yeah. You're going to help create this memory. Making a memory lamp is an original and cheap way to commemorate your personal history and bring those old negatives back to life. And they look good, too. All you have to do is choose the negatives that mean the most to you and using craft glue, attach them in straight clean lines to a standard frosted table lamp. Once that's done, give all four sides a generous coating of lacquer, which helps to protect them over time. Leave it to dry and there you have it, your very own memory lamp. There you go. Wow. 
I'm speechless. It's awesome. Absolutely awesome. It's a roller coaster of emotions, to be honest. It's hitting me, but at the same time, it's, it's making me like proud. Crazy. Thanks a lot. You're I most it. welcome. It's my great pleasure. And uh, I hope you can take it home, give it pride of place in your new. That's it. That, 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 house. That'll be with me all the way now. Bye bye. I'm really, really overwhelmed. Something that obviously will get cherished now, and it's amazing how you can turn something, like I say, nothing into, into something that you can keep in your house for, for generations. Well, I'm really pleased to see Jordan's finding a use for some of his keepsakes. But now it's time to see how the rest of his items do. He and Sam have taken Paul's advice, loaded up the van and headed to the Quorn Car Boot Sale to see if they can turn some more memories into mounds of money. Why would you bubble wrap plastic cups? You look on the tape on my holding. Oh no, means I've got to sit there all day listening to them. Yeah. With everything out and ready to go, I wonder what Jordan's planning to walk away with at the end of the day. Target's £100. Target's £100. I'll be happy. Very happy. And Jordan's certainly standing his ground when it comes to reaching that target. Ten. 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 Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Quid. Ten p. Quid. 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 Two pound. How much are these plates and the mean a bargain? I want a bargain on them. 25p each. Oh, come on, less than that. 150. Go on, 150 then. And I'm going now. That, yeah. I'll you got yourself another bargain. Thank you. Yeah, it's best. not long before Jordan's bargain starts to bag in some buyers. I think we're going to smash your target, so, yeah, I'm really, really pleased so far. As the day moves on, some of the items that Paul selected earlier start to make their way into the buyer's hands. The portable DVD player that was valued at 20 to 30 pounds sold for 10 pounds. Thank you. The Royal Dulton tea set valued at 10 to 20 pounds sold for another 10 pounds. But unfortunately, the leather biker jacket and the digital video camera valued at 20 to 30 pounds failed to make their way off the stall. Not wanting to appear desperate, Jordan's still holding out on the set of champagne glasses that Paul valued at 30 to 40 pounds. 30 pounds. Barbara glass. What about 10 pounds for the glasses? Can't take that, mate, I'm sorry. No, no, it's, uh, that is a bit too, too, too cheap. Yeah, can you, can you take 15 for him? No, I can't, I've got a friend waiting. Waiting to give me 20 pound if I don't sell him, so. Okay, give me your best price. 20 pound. Just come on. All right, okay, I'll take 20 with this. Yeah, yeah go on then. Yeah, deal, deal, deal. All right. And it pays off as Jordan sells the champagne glasses for £20. Cheers, mate. Nice one. Cheers. As the day winds down, it looks like Jordan's finally met his match. Hi. Hi, yeah. Are you interested? Yes, I am. £10? I'll give you £7. Ten. I'm not budging on seven. I'm not budging at ten. Oh, I'll have to leave it then. See you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I'll take eight. Eight? I'll take eight. All right. <laughs> Smart move, Jordan. Another eight pounds to the total. So at the end of it all, how much is Jordan taking to the bank? Smashed it about two hundred pounds. And what are his plans for all that money? I pawned my mum's ring um, in the situation I was in. I know I said I was pouring it towards other things, but I've. I, with, with the amount it's going to cost to turn my mum's and brother's ashes into a diamond, it's obviously nothing nowhere near. And with me pouring in my mum's ring with the situation I was in, I can go and get it back. I'm just, I can't wait. I can't wait. That's a great result. It seems the car boot sale was a roaring success. Well done, Jordan. So, Jordan, you had a garage absolutely stuffed full of things, hadn't you? Mm -hmm. But now you've managed to, quote, clear it? Yeah, it's all gone, yeah. All gone? All gone. What an amazing job yeah. you've done. Yeah, well, I couldn't have done it without these help. So, yeah, obviously, it's, it's nice to, to take the weight off my shoulders and get it out of the way. Well, Jordan's powers of persuasion meant he came away from the car boot sale with an impressive £215 in his pocket, which it seems he's already put to good use. Yeah, I managed to get my mum's ring back, so... Oh, let me see. 
Yeah, oh. I, I, had to, I had to pawn it because of the situation. Did you? Yeah. Oh, so you had that in a pawn shop? Yeah, and with the money I made at the car boot, I got it back. Good on you yeah. for doing that. Yeah, That's fantastic. Hopefully I won't get in that pickle again and no, well, stay around my neck. No. Yeah. I'm sure your mum would be very proud of yeah, you. Yeah, I'm sure too, yeah. It's, it's been a long, long journey, but now to this day, it's nice to, to, to feel like things are going so good for me. And yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know it was true for things to go good so yeah. fast and so yeah. quick. Yeah. How it's turned around in the past few months, it's, it's major. Jordan's been so brave facing the hoard that contained many difficult memories for him. I think he's now ready to look forward to a brighter and clutter-free future. Join me, Aggie McKenzie, next time on Storage Hoarders.